Please welcome Sean Marshall. I swear to you, Josh set this up because all the speakers here tonight, there'll be elements of each one of them in this presentation. <laughs> Excuse this, this has been a rough week, so I'm just going to have fun with this. Am I really that tall? <laughs> so good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another session of the Church of Science. My name is Pastor Sean Marshall, and the good Reverend Josh Manning here has invited me to give you a sermon. <laughs> so, as you can see the disclaimer here, no offense to anybody, but you're just going to have fun with this. And hopefully you'll be able to realize what mankind has done. We're going to compare a couple of things here. So, if you want to follow along. Also, you have to get fixed. <laughs> this is why I'm looking <laughs> Thou shalt not wear false witness. Thou shalt not be biased, for thy opinion is not fact. Thy sources of information must be reliable, verifiable, and backed by evidence. Thou shalt cite thy sources of information. Thy test shall have controls. Thy test shall be blind. Thou shalt use large sample numbers. Thou shalt reinforce thy statements with evidence. Thou shalt measure objectively, not guess subjectively. Thou shalt base thy evidence on conclusions. Now the second commandment here tonight will be our starting point. Many people use a layman definition of the word theory to mean something akin to an intelligent opinion. Now we all know that is not the real definition of theory as explained in scientific terms. To explain it better, let's go over a few things first. From the National Center for Science Education. Fact in science, an observation that has been repeatedly confirmed and for all practical purposes is accepted as true. Truth in science, however, is never final. And what is accepted as fact today may be modified or even cast out tomorrow. Amen. Hypothesis, a tentative statement about the natural world leading to deductions that can be tested. If the deductions are verified, the hypothesis is provisionally corroborated. If the deductions are incorrect, the original hypothesis is proved false and must be abandoned or modified. Hypotheses can be used to build more complex inferences and explanations. A descriptive gener generalization about how some aspect of the natural world behaves under stated circumstances is what we call a law. A law pretty much states that for these conditions, this event happens. Praise the law! A theory in science it is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world that can incorporate facts, laws, inferences, and tested hypotheses. Oh yeah, amen. Theories are valued not just for explaining what happened, but for also for telling us what will happen for a future event. Yet, even knowing this, good theories can be replaced. But some may ask, why are good theories still replaceable? Here's an example. Brother Isaac Newton's explanation of gravity is still used today. But, Brother Albert Einstein's explanation of what really is happening is explained in a much better way. How much better, you ask? Raise your hand here if you ever used GPS before. Thank Brother Einstein for that one. That is a about GPS satellites, and yet applications of his theory yeah. is used here so we can have a much better way of life. <laughs> but let me hear you say science. Science! It works. <laughs> One of the chief goals of science is to always strive to expand and refine our knowledge. Incorrect information will not result in truthful laws or functional theories and will be discarded as useless once discovered. In this way, science is self-correcting. The charlatans and tricksters 
that it would show up here. But those that are biased will not last as the deceptions will eventually be revealed. Their ideas cast out and their names forgotten as we all move on in science. And some will ask, why should I be a member of the Church of Science? Simple. You get to contribute to the advancement of all, be they a believer or not. No contribution is too small or too great. And you need not be someone with faith. Just get rid of your bias. As to those who claim that their religion supersedes that of all others, let's examine these claims. Some claim that their man can feed 5,000. Well, three men have helped feed over three billion people. <laughs> they say only the gods can traverse the skies. <laughs> yeah, right. They say that man walked on water, we walked on the moon. <laughs> and they claim to heal the sick, we can prevent people from becoming sick. Make the lame to walk and the blind to see. We've been there and done that. We're getting better at it too. Serious fireball floating across the night skies and angry demon. It's really made of ice that's been orbiting us for many a millennia. <laughs> Shamans guess that we are made out of the same stuff as the earth, but science has shown us that we're made out of the same stuff as the stars. There's a little star stuff in all of us here. Rejoice, I say, because each one of us is a star. You're a star. You're a star. And you're a star. Rejoice in the model of science. Rejoice in the fact that we can understand more about the universe than we live in. And instead of fearing it, we can look upon it with awe and wonder. Rejoice in the fact that we can see more beautiful things from this planet. Rejoice in the fact that we can appreciate the very small and the very large and have both scales work for our advantage. Rejoice in the fact that we can live longer, more fruitful lives thanks to medical science. Rejoice in the fact that we do not fear the diseases that once killed our forefathers. Rejoice in the fact that we can communicate with anyone, anywhere in this planet, anytime we want to. Rejoice in the fact that we can provide maps of future generations so they can go to places and discover something that no one has discovered before. I love this one here. Rejoice in the fact that the lives of science, chemists, physicists, engineers, and mathematicians have given us marvels in computers, the internet, and web technology so that we can have a much better time sharing knowledge with each other. And for all these cute little kittens and babies. <laughs> Rejoicing the fact that men and women have dedicated their lives to proving theories and giving us things to look forward to in science. Some even sacrificing their very lives in the process so that we can have an easier time advancing our way of life. Rejoicing the fact that science just plain works. <laughs> As I conclude this version of the Church of Science with a devotion. It's all. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. And be thankful for all the people that have advanced our way of life and to set us free from all the things that could have killed us all. May the words be put to good use by us. And may we be the bridge and the inspiration to the next generation. May those yet to come walk into the future with new hopes, new ideas, and new dreams so that they can have a much better future than the future that was given to us by our predecessors. And let me hear the congregation say, Science! Science! It works! It works! Thank you. <laughs>